Hello and welcome to Meanwhile in the Falklands, our weekly podcast where we talk about everything that's going on in the Falklands and everything to do with FITV. I am Kyle and, and my I'm lovely co-host. Hannah! There we go. Woo! <laughs> Episode 72. See, three weeks, three weeks Paul has been away and I, we've been doing the podcast and finally I've gotten the introductions done properly. I know, well done. Exactly, look at that. Bravo. Round of applause. What a pro. Um, you might be noticing that this podcast is a little bit late. We've been having a mad day today. We've been running around all over the place. Been hectic. Been absolutely hectic, but um, we're here now with recording. We're ready to go, and we've got. Tons and it's of... just the and two it's just of the us. <laughs> See, I'm allowed to sing that much. Yeah, exactly. Copyright. There we go. <laughs> See, if you want to get past copyright, just sing a little bit, and in different sections, perfectly fine. <laughs> Um, but yes, so it's just the two of us. Unfortunately, Tom is sick. Yeah. There's a bit of an illness going around. Yeah. Um, I think some people at MPA have got the norovirus, so I they're know, fly- I know. flowing up all over Terrible. the place. But um, highly contagious is what I've Highly heard. contagious. So anyone who has the norovirus, I am not allowing them to come anywhere near. Didn't me. Didn't you message your lovely housemate Adam I and did. tell this him? This is terrible, isn't it? Well, <laughs> I didn't. My other half messaged him saying. Don't come back because he works up at MPA. Yeah. Like, if you've got the norovirus, you're not welcome in our <laughs> <laughs> Last so you, thing you've... I want is to get even sicker. So <laughs> he's been banned from his own home, which exactly. which makes sense because we've been we've all had like a stinking cold for the yep. last Sore throat, two sniggles. weeks, three weeks. Yeah. God knows, it's just been awful. But unfortunately, because of the norovirus and the sickness up at MPA, it means that the flights have been getting delayed and all I sorts know, of stuff. I know, it's been going a bit mad. I think initially it was some sort of tropical storm at Cape Verde yep. that delayed the first flight, and now norovirus and cruise sickness. So, it's not just, good. No, it's not. It's not at all. So it's Fingers all... crossed, Paul and Steve, if you're listening, that you manage exactly. to get on your flight next Thursday. <laughs> Safely exactly. and well. Because, <laughs> of course, Paul and Steve are away at the moment. They're having a lovely holiday where Paul is doing all kinds of arts and crafts and Steve is doing all kinds of business. I don't know. I, I don't know what working. Steve does. I think, to be honest, it's a working. Something it's, to do with numbers. It's not 100% a, uh, <laughs> a holiday, shall we say. Yes. But, um, yeah, no, and they've also been very busy interviewing for some they have. potential new candidates. They have. And I think I could be correct in saying oh. they have offered the job to... Someone. To someone. Mystery person. Mystery person. So we will be having a new yes. person to bring into the podcast within the next month. Yes. Which will be exciting. Fingers crossed the paperwork goes through. Fingers crossed. And fingers yeah. crossed they won't have the amount of difficulty that I had when I came down here when I was chasing the hospital for X, Y, and Z medical records and oh, well, every single blood test. And, oh, my um, God check that you have to go through to get here isn't absolute there? And dental nightmare checks. dental checks remember, you have your, your teeth x-rayed all sorts of stuff see the the dental stuff for me absolutely fine went to the dentist went can you just do an x-ray they went yeah sure why not <laughs> went went to the went to my local gp said I, look, I need a blood test i need you to test for x y and z things that the form needs the amount of like holes I had to jump through, the amount of paperwork, it was absolutely ridiculous. But yeah. I got here in the end and hopefully the new person will not have those same kinds of issues. Yes, and, and won't be delayed on the flight. Away. And won't be delayed on the flight. <laughs> because not only is Paul and Steve coming back next week, but our lovely band, who are coming down for our amazing country festival, are Woo! also on the same flight. And if they get delayed, it might cause... It will be an FITV band. It will be an FITV band. So there'll be Carl me... Carl on the tambourine. Me on the tambourine. And me on the triangle. There you... we go. <laughs> It's, it's Tom an... can do the singing, <laughs> sorted. <laughs> With a purely tambourine and triangle band. <laughs> yes. it's, it's, it's as country as you get. Yes. We'll, um, we'll play some Budweiser cans. It'll be absolutely that amazing. That would be very good. I'm excited, <laughs> though. It should be a really good event. We yeah. sold out all our tickets. Absolutely Woo! sold out. We've had people coming in and out of the office it's every day. It's been hasn't it? And people are still phoning Phones up saying, I know it's sold out, but if there's a chance to get a ticket. The wait list is unreal. It's absolutely, absolutely unreal. Mad. But we've, absolutely we've banked our money. It's sold yep. the tickets have been given to the sponsors yep. today which was good we've given those all out so it should be a really good night yes. and caroline who is sitting listening in on sitting the podcast in the background, is smiling has away been, has been very busy organizing decorations oh, and yeah. making neckerchiefs for yep. bottles of Budweiser she's got all kinds all of sorts. different ideas she's making like bunting, bunting out, out of budweiser yes. cans she's getting hay and flowing on the stage <laughs> making tables out of pat it's going to look absolutely amazing it will do good. So it's been very good. yes there's a lot of work being put into this and i hope it Hope it turns out well. Yes. But speaking of a lot of work and hoping things turn out well, <laughs> we've had a very busy week. We have. And things, I like to think, turned out well this week. But I think they did. I think the they did. The overall product looked lovely. Yes. And I must say, I've just got off the phone with a lovely, happy customer who said last week's show was fabulous. He oh, loved wonderful. it. He thought we were highly very professional. It's... Caroline, he thought you were going to come and get my job. <laughs> <laughs> but he said that 
like, come he thinks that the show has moved on leaps and bounds over the past year, Lovely. which is really nice now, to hear. Now, has he just said that because he was in the show? <laughs> I think maybe, maybe, maybe that could be it, but at, but at least someone's it's, watching. It's and nice to hear the compliments, content. exactly. And obviously, all, all of the listeners to our podcast watch our show avidly every week. Don't you, listener? <laughs> exactly. Listen, listen every week, watch every week. Exactly. You know where to find us. You know, we say it at the end of every show. Occasionally, we get it right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, we've had a very busy week. Well, I say we've had a busy week. You've had a very I've, busy week. I've had a very busy week, but I've also been getting a lot of free food. I know. Well, I say free. D I, eating. I, I've been eating a lot, which sounds really bad, but it's full food. Good job course. you went on the sofa this week, mate. Exactly. <laughs> God, I wouldn't even fit into my suit anymore, really, would I? But yes. What have um, you been up to, Carl? Do so tell. on Saturday, I was at the lovely Great Big Breakfast that is put on by Team Tranquil. Um, it's for World Mental Health Day, isn't For it? World Mental Health yes. Day. And Team Tranquil is the local mental health charity in the Falklands. Um, and they do all kinds of different things to support people with mental health issues and like make sure that they're not feeling like they're alone and giving them the support they need. And it's about communicating. It's about isn't it? communicating, That's what I've isn't heard. it? It's been. And I, I saw that. The, the event was quite interesting in your package. I was having a little nosy. Yes. It's not just an, an eating event, no, is it? No, it's not. There's lots of different activities on offer to get There's, your brains going yep. and get you in a <laughs> mentally good, spirited, woohoo mood. It was it was amazing, actually. There was plenty to do. Like, there was people that had bought there was a, a great big thing where people had collected all kinds of knickknacks and little bits and pieces, and they were showing off and showing, like, how relaxing it is to collect things and finish all these sets and stuff. There was Falklands Conservation that had a lovely little meditation booth Ooh. thing that was supposed to be like you were out in nature, which oh, was that's interesting. Oh, that quite nice, yeah. Yeah, and then the, um, the spinners and weavers were there, and they were absolutely lovely. They got, they even got me to do some knitting and do some weaving that and do some impressive. crocheting. Crocheting, uh, so wow. Crocheting, I know. And I had a lovely time. So the I viewer, like... I'm going to say, the listener must have to watch <laughs> yes. the show this week to Paula, see... Paula, if you're listening, and I know you are... To see Kyle have a go at knitting. <laughs> I've said it, Kyle actually has I'm, a go I'm at quite, knitting. I'm quite Paula proud of myself. It. Exactly. And Paula, I hope that you are proud of me as well. <laughs> because I did some knitting and it didn't go too badly. I was... There was a lovely, lovely lady who was sitting next to me, showing me how to do it, and was very, very patient with me. As I kept going, is it this way? Is it that way? Uh, which bit do I pull? She was absolutely lovely. Has been knitting since she was four years old, so was an absolute master at it. And yeah, so I was doing that, and then lovely, lovely Nancy Locke was showing me how to crochet. And it's... Crochet it's, is difficult. It's excessively fiddly. It is. And I, you've, because you've only got this one little, this hook. one little hook yeah. that you use. Yeah. And it's twisty. Yeah. And you've got like pull, yeah. grab a, grab a loop and pull it through another loop. And suffice to say, I was absolutely awful at it. <laughs> absolutely awful. <laughs> at least you gave it a try. But I gave it a, I gave it a good try. And then I did some weaving, and weaving was my favourite because it was the easiest. <laughs> Because all you had to do was go up and down these little threads and pull it through and then go back. And so I've got a lovely little woven, like someone, I sent a picture of it to someone. They said it's a lovely scarf for the mouse. <laughs> so I made a lovely little mouse scarf. So Carl, you'll be weaving away, will you? Weaving away. <laughs> I, I even sent it to my mum and was like, look at this. Aren't you proud of me? Aww. I've been doing some weaving and she laughed and went, ha ha. You've it looks been learning, okay. which is good. I've been learning. But I Expanding wanted to ask my you, actually, base. I know you were just briefly talking about collecting items yes if you could collect anything what would you collect oh god that's a dangerous question i collect i actually collect a lot of stuff but it's all very embarrassing go on i want to know it's i had all... a feeling it would be that's why i asked <laughs> well when i was younger i used to collect like pokemon cards oh, and stuff yeah. like that yeah. which big makes craze. sense yeah. big craze um and now i don't know what do I collect? I collect all bits and pieces. I, it's all nerdy stuff. Dirty so dishes. Dirty dishes. <laughs> dirty dishes that collect up in the sink. Um, I collect, what else do I collect? Books, D&D &D books. Most things to do with D&D. &D, yeah. That kind of stuff. Different Pokemon games and bits and pieces. I'm a huge nerd, if you've not noticed that yet. <laughs> if it's nerdy, I've probably got it somewhere in my bedroom at home. And that probably tells you everything you need to know about me. It's difficult. But though, isn't it? it is. Collecting things. I don't know. What do, some people say that what you collect says something about yes. you. Yes. Which I think, oh God, does it? Well, speaking of speaking of collections, my mum has decided that she's now collecting coins and has been on the phone to me at least twice this month going, so you're coming back in a few weeks. Make sure you bring me back some Falklands coins <laughs> that have some Falklands designs on it. And I've been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, now, I, I actually, was going to say, did you manage to find that very, very rare Falklands 50p we featured <laughs> in, the, in the news last week or the week before, I two weeks ago, with the rock hopper, but it was the wrong kind of rock hopper I don't on it. Think so. I don't think Minted so, the wrong unfortunately. One. Sold for 400 quid. I know, which is amazing. But Your no, mum could be raking it in. Well, that's, that's the hope. But <laughs> I've, I've managed, 
If she's listening, which she probably isn't, because I don't know if she listens to the podcast. She used to. I don't hello, know if she Carl's still does. Mom. Hello, you're still hello, with if us. you're listening. Um, but yeah, she, so I've got her a one p, a two p, a five p, a ten p, a two pound, a one pound, a fifty p, a twenty p. I've got the whole set. There isn't a two pound coin. Is that a Falklands? There's a Falklands two pound coin. I've no got way. one. I found one. No. I got it from got it from a shop. So it's and it's got a little Falklands design on it, and it's perfect. Aww. So she'll be happy to know that I've got that. That's good. But um, yes, going back to the topic, the men the mental health big breakfast yeah. was absolutely amazing. They raised a lot of money, didn't they? They did. They raised over the thousand pounds, and they cooked over the hundred and seventy hot meals. What? They made over three hundred and ten eggs for people, is which is absolute madness. But yeah, it was it was absolutely lovely, and it's just it was just an absolutely fun and and actually. Caroline, speaking of Caroline, she was there doing some line dancing with Woo! the line dancing group as ready, well. Getting ready, prepared Getting ready for the, the country, country festival. festival. Plug, plug. Did you ever go? <laughs> I did not, but I did film Caroline. Cop out, cop out. <laughs> <laughs> I did film Caroline having a go, and I must say she was the best person there. So there we go. <laughs> but that's a, that's, a, that's a thing though. Mental health, I find, sometimes has a bit of a stigma around it, doesn't it? Yes, it, it does. And people don't really like to talk about it. But that brings me on quite nicely to Chat and Chew, which yes. is a group that meet... I think it's once a month they do like a nice luncheon where you can turn up, you can donate five pounds, homemade soup and a roll, and just get out the house exactly. and have a chat to people. Get out, great. talk to some people you wouldn't normally talk to, exactly. ha have have some fun for the lunchtime, get yourself out of the office, get yourself but out the house. But they did something extra special this week that they you got did. to have a little sneak peek on. What were they up to? <laughs> do tell. Well, they were, they, so they've got a whole bunch of lunchtime trips coming up, mm -hmm. and um, this week was their first one that they've done. And they went on this absolutely lovely boat ride around Stanley Harbour and up around to York Bay and back. And you couldn't have asked for better weather. I was, was going to say, the weather that day oh was Oh my God, glorious. it was so sunny. There was like a, just a gentle breeze. It wasn't windy like it, it usually gets down here. And it was absolutely sunny and just clear blue skies. Couldn't have asked for a better day. And they seemed to absolutely have the time of their lives. Um, they saw all kinds of wildlife. They saw penguins and dolphins and seals and all kinds of birds. And you saw something too. I and did. Was this your first? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this. Was your, <laughs> this your first spotting of seals? Because you were quite lucky. You didn't have to go on a boat ride. It was I like didn't. the end of the jetty. I did. Um, yes, it was the first. I don't know. I think I've spotted some seals out there before, but this was the first time I got close to some. So there were these lovely seals right like, at the end of the jetty that were just kind of lying in the sun and having a Basking. lovely time. Like snoozing away, basking in the sun, and just absolutely looked absolutely beautiful. Um, got up right and close to them, got some lovely, lovely pictures, got some lovely, lovely video, which is in this week's show if you're interested to want to see that. Um, sent some stuff home, people at home couldn't believe that I was so close to these seals and that the seals did not care at all. Which but is, you weren't that close, you still I wasn't you that said, close. I, I you kept, did keep I kept distance. a respectful yeah. distance, yeah. mainly because I didn't want them to wake up and push me in the water. <laughs> but I kept a respectful distance and it was all, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and that's the, one of the best things about being down here. You can get so close to the wildlife. Well, that's and the thing. And if it's, it's not even a case of you getting close to them. If you sit, yeah. and if you have a long period of time where you yeah. can actually sit in and wait, they will come to you. I know. and it's they're intrigued. Incredible. Yeah, they are. But like I said... But the, obviously don't sit too close to something yes. that might... Like a big bull seal or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That, Maybe that's stay away from... Probably not the best idea. We're not, we're not yeah. encouraging that. You Use your best judgment, yes. is what I'll say. Use your best judgment about what to be near. I think it's 15 metres, is it? I'm 10 metres. I can't remember. 10 metres or 15 metres. Both is yeah. a, a respectful yeah. distance, Give them their distance. Say. But yeah, like I said, the chat and chew guys had an absolutely amazing time. I interviewed them when they got off the boats. And... Although, although a couple of them were a bit apprehensive before going on a boat because some people don't like the water and they some people get, get their sea legs by the end. They all got their sea legs and in fact while on the boat a lot of them were saying can we book to have another go? Can we just do one more lap or do it on another day? They absolutely loved That's it lovely. and I was very very jealous because I would have loved to have Love to have been able to go, go with them, but unfortunately yeah. I could not. Well, we shall try and organise. We a shall boat try because I don't mind being on a boat. I actually quite like it. Do you? Yeah, You're I don't a mind boat, it. A boaty. I'm, I'm, I'm not maybe not that that much, but not I when it's choppy and blowing. Not when it's out there. When, but... it, when it's a lovely day and you're just kind of like having having some fun, then it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so I was off doing that. And then also went to a buffet this week. Oh yes, which was this was a soiree. This was a soiree, this was a soiree for um, breast cancer, where they were doing getting some donations, doing a bit of a raffle, having some food, and having a lovely time while they raised some money for um, breast cancer charities. And how much money did they raise? I don't know. I don't think they've announced the amount of money that they've ah. raised yet, because it only happened yesterday. But um, they, it was absolutely amazing. They had a whole huge spread of food, so I got another lunch. Um, which was absolutely lovely. I just find it crazy how charitable people are it's here. It's mad, in the isn't it? Because, I... I mean, today, hence why this podcast is coming out so late, yeah. we, we had a phone call from one of our friends saying, oh, um, we're presenting a very, very big cheque yes. with a large sum of money to cancer 
Awareness Trust, yes. which is absolutely great. Absolutely um, amazing. But another charitable thing. Earlier on in the week, we had another check um, being donated to the museum, a thousand pounds from the Type Twenty One. Yep. Type Twenty One Association. Association. I mean, people are so generous here, I know. and it's all towards good causes. And I mean, we we live in somewhere that's population of three thousand. You're yeah. a small, small place. Exactly. A lot of people putting yeah. their fingers in their pockets. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I think because it's because it's such a small community, everyone kind of knows someone that's affected by something and wants to show their support and wants to give a bit of money and to that's, it. That's and that's one of the greatest things exactly. about Portland's, I think. And plus, if you can get a lunch out of it, then why not? Yeah. So. <laughs> no, it's it is it's all good. for the greater it good, is, isn't it? It is good, and and also I think especially when it comes to healthcare and things here, obviously because we are quite a remote island, getting to a hospital. Yeah. We, we do have a hospital here yes. and there are facilities, but if you need specialist care, you need to go to the UK or you need to go to Chile or South America. It, it's good to have that yeah. support. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. Financial is. support. Yeah, say, exactly. Because yeah. it can be, medical care can always be expensive. Yeah. Even even with the NHS and with that kind of stuff, it can still, still be expensive to get to and from places. And the and flight then, in itself. And the is, flight. Yeah. And then also, if, you, if you've got someone who's ill and there's people looking after them, it's nice to do something for them yeah. as well to show that they're nearly appreciated and nearly like um, well liked in the community. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, um, and that wasn't even the only piece of good news this week as we were at a government house reception. Oh, for that was a, good, wasn't it? For, that was for really good. For absolutely amazing students that have just finished the first ever life skills workshop here yes. in the Yes, you're Islands. probably wondering, listener, what is <laughs> life skills workshop? A life skills workshop, well, this is something that I wish that my school had yeah, taught me same. when I was younger, but same. it's a workshop that teaches you how to do banking, accounting, looking at your tax forms, cooking, shopping, everything yeah. from that, phone, yeah. phone, phoning things up, looking at, looking all the, at bills, all the, the, all the little the bits telephone, of adult life that you don't really know. Yeah. Things that you think, oh, I wish yeah. someone taught me this at school. Exactly. Well, well this is what these four students have been doing. It was the first time they've run the course. Yep. Brand new course. They were the guinea pig year. And they smashed it. Yeah, and they all seem to have loved the course as yes, well and loved the people that were teaching it. They were raving about it, weren't they? Yeah, they, and I think one of the girls was saying that, like, she was so proudly holding a certificate and saying about this is the eighth or ninth certificate she's got. She's got a whole wall of them back at home. And it's just, it's just really nice seeing, that, like, seeing people achieve that kind of stuff and being so proud of it and wanting people to know. And for Government House as well to do a reception and make them feel, feel special. Cause, like, and it was nice, were, it, was a bit, it was a very bijou affair. It was very it? bijou. It was a, a small. It was a very small, intimate, very small. But they were all dressed up dressed lovely, up so dressed in nicely. a big long blue gown yes. one of the girls had on, which I yeah. thought I should have dressed up more. I came straight <laughs> from work. In my office. Yeah, we were, we were like sweating and like all horrible and yeah. ugh. But, but it no, was okay. it was it was really nice. And Alex Smith and Deputy Governor yes. did a, a speech, presented them with the certificates as well, which, yeah. which was good. So they are actually going to be running that course next year. So I thought I might sign myself up for it if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I need to learn stuff about I need to learn life skills as well. Kind exactly. of thing. I've got no idea. I didn't know I didn't know how to like a check before I came down here, so <laughs> I obviously need some of these skills because I do not understand how to do it in the slightest exactly but that's not the only government house deception because next, next week, week we have them. loads of them yes we've got one for um safe lane global the demining team that are down here at the moment this is their last year demining and the Falklands will be by the end of the next year i think mine free yes Woo! which means we can go on all the lovely sandy beaches yep. that look great but yep. we're not allowed to step on because there's danger mine signs yep. and so <laughs> they're doing a reception for them and they're also doing a reception for the hockey um, team who were out in Miami this year at the Latam Cup. Yes, which they were. Would be nice to celebrate their achievements. Exactly, it's nice, and it's nice the government house do, does that kind of stuff. And, really and it will be more food. For and me it'll be and more. Kyle. It'll be more <laughs> free food for us. So you know, we, we can't, can't really, complain. Yeah, we can't complain we, about we're that. We're not can well we? fed here. That's <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only thing that's happening next week because we're also going to be super busy on Sunday because it's the Stone Run Half Marathon. Yes, Carl has kindly volunteered to run it. Oh, uh, I don't know if I volunteered. I think I, I think, won't be running it. Let's tell you that much. Yeah, I'll we be, be I will be in a car filming it out of the window. Yes, it's, it's quite <laughs> a difficult thing because logistically, obviously, you've got people who are running at the front, people at the back, people in the middle, and you want to try and catch everyone, even amount of footage. You don't just want to car the front runners. So normally we have two or three cars and split. And um, this time round, we'll we'll be doing it with two. Yeah. Um, it'll probably be me and you and Tom. Trying to grab bits and bobs of people running and then grabbing them when they're all sweaty at the Exactly. End. <laughs> and, you know, stopping them while they're out of breath and asking them for an interview. Yes. So, uh, talking about how, how well the half, half, blah, 
they half marathon went. Fingers which, crossed the weather is good for yes. it. Because it was actually postponed. It was supposed to be last Sunday, but the weather was so terrible that I they know, had it was to so postpone windy it to and this stormy Sunday. and awful. So we're hoping that it will actually happen. Yes. Bright and early start for us. I know. Eight, half eight in the half morning, eight is it? Half eight down there because the walk, they, there were also people walking it. So yeah, that's true. The walkers will be setting off at half yes. past eight, which should be nice. But um, I can't imagine getting up. Walking all the way to... Walking all the way... Where are they walking? They're walking all the way to Surf Bay, the beach. Oh, okay. Which should be good. And then they may be after us. Some of them might have a dip. You never know. Oh, never know. Midwinter swim. Midwinter <laughs> summer swim. That's, that works. Sorry, I'm getting <laughs> snottier and snottier. Yeah, so sorry. Our, 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 really our illnesses are starting to flare up a little bit yes. because the thumb is ridiculously warm. It is. Um, but yes, and then also next week, we, well, on Saturday, National Cleanup Day. Yes, that yes. is actually quite a nice thing that Falklands Conservation organise every year um, where they invite members of the public to come and meet them at Victory Green out on the front road and help clean up Stanley. Yes. Because it's a very, very windy island, we get a lot of plastic and debris plastic and blowing all cardboard around and all, all kinds over of stuff. the place. Yeah. So um, it's quite a nice day, time to sit together and all think, right, you know what, we're going to get outside, weather's good, get the little clamps, the yeah. little robot litter picking things, get your tools <laughs> together and start picking things up and throwing them in the bin. Which is a great initiative because the environment down here is so important mm. and all the wildlife and it's nice to make sure that... And especially with tourism, it's, the, exactly. it's the, one of exactly. the main people, sources of People want to see these unspoiled the landscapes and yeah. all these wildlife. You don't, you don't want to see a penguin that's in a cardboard box because it got stuck or anything like that. So it's nice exactly. to do a bit of a clean up, get all the beaches looking nice and pristine, ready for the tourists, ready for the people that live here to, who, come, who want to enjoy the summer on the beach. And just to get out and about. And it's not just in Stanley. If you're out in camp and working out there, you can do a bit of cleanup in your local area around some of the settlements and then just kind of let Falklands Conservation know and then they'll be absolutely, absolutely enthralled by it. That's there is a hashtag as well, isn't there? So there is. So people can post photographs of them cleaning wherever they are yes. on the Facebook group. Yes, they can. Quite nice. And please, like, let people know. It'll probably encourage more people to do some cleaning up. And We've had a clean up in our office. We have. Hannah's been kind on Kind of her... half. Well, we haven't really. We, we attempted it and then yes. we got very busy. Hannah's but, been um, on a classic clean up. Classic, classic clean up. <laughs> I don't know why. But, I get it in my head that I need yeah. to tidy everything. Which but is it's looking, it's looking pretty good. It's looking Just pretty nice. It needs a bit of a hoover. Yeah, it does. <laughs> needs a bit of a hoover. But... <laughs> But anyway, I think that's, that probably does it for us. Well, I will now. mention one thing. I'm going to do yes. a, a plug, a naughty okay. plug. But uh, this week in the news, obviously, hot topic, as listener has probably heard, Brexit. Yes. What's happening with Brexit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to say too much on it, but all I shall say is that we will be bringing you an extra, extra special episode of Talking Point with Richard Cockwell. Um, if, if the listener doesn't know what Talking Point is, it's a show that we put out once a month um, where our lovely host, Richard Cockwell, interviews and discusses key issues with um, people from the Falklands. So things like waste management, um, Brexit, capital plan, fishing, government thing, government fish, fisheries, all sorts yeah. of stuff. And we, he brings in some experts yeah. on the subject and they all sit and talk about the facts of things, yes. which is... It's quite good and talk through issues and how, how things are working yeah. behind the scenes. So, so I think we'll Richard be will be doing an extra, extra special episode of um, Talking Point on Brexit. It will be out at the end of this month um, and he'll be bringing in some, a lot of different representatives yes, from will. various different industries like meat industry and the meat, fishing industry, wool, two of the main industries fishing, that will, may, may be affected by it. Getting some people so, from government, getting some people from And we'll be looking business. at how, how it's going to affect the Falklands. Yeah. So, Stay tuned and watch that exactly. by the end of the month. It will be probably the last week of October, yes, yes. hopefully. But yes, look forward to that. It's, it's bound to be interesting. It usually See, is. I thought I'd try and get Brexit in there. Yeah. I just yeah, wanted yeah. to get it in there without any debate or any discussion on it. Exactly. There <laughs> so there you go. There's your, there's your Brexit five minutes. Yes. Um, but yes, like I said, um, I think that about does it for us. If you want to watch Falklands and Focus, then please look at KTV F. Channel 800, it's in the 800 I'm to 900 it's 803 range. I'm because at my house it's 803. At so if you'd house, like to come yes. to my house and watch it, if, if you are here in yep. Stanley, come to my house. Come to Hannah's house, it. you probably know where it is. It's not my house, <laughs> it's my other half's house. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you should have a viewing party this week. I shall, an FITV viewing party, a focus group. There exactly, we go. there we go. Um, but yes, it's on one of the 800 channels, we will find it out eventually. I Probably not, but we will try. Um, <laughs> and if you want to listen to more episodes of this lovely podcast, then you can find us anywhere on SoundCloud or iTunes. Yes. Look, this just is look number for, 72. This is number 72. We've done 72. We're getting old. 
well, coming off yes. and tired, yeah. can you tell, listener? Yeah. Hopefully, Carl and I will survive the weekend. Fingers crossed. And if we do, we will be bringing you another podcast yes, yes, on we Friday. Will. We'll let you know all about the marathon and how tired we were from that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see you anyway, next week. See you later.